Hello and welcome back to Taya's YouTube channel. Also a hearty welcome to my new subscribers. My numbers are climbing daily, which is wonderful for my channel. Today we will be taking the exciting step of turning this plain styrofoam backdrop into a mountainous range. I developed this procedure myself last year when I was limited as to the space the mountains could take up on my shelf and it proved so popular that I'm going to use the same procedure this year, even though I have more space. A mountainous backdrop really adds a special ambiance and magic to the village and making it look like a place straight out of the Alps or the Rockies. So stay tuned as we get started. So I think we will start with the smaller panel first, uh, rather than start with the large panel that, that's across the back, because that could be fairly intimidating. This might give us a better feel for exactly what the process is before we start in the bigger carvings. The first thing we need to do is go to Google and look for mountain drawings or mountain illustrations and look for a site with this sort of thing. These are artist renditions of mountain ranges and from this we can determine what the mountain is going to look like on the styrofoam. This is the first step. For the smaller piece we're going to keep stay with a simpler design, perhaps this one. With the larger one, the pieces we're going with, with the larger design, such as this one. Um, and there's no saying that you have to stick with this the whole time. You can go to uh, the Google and find other ones as well, which ones would suit you best. But I think we're going to start with this one first of all. And what we'll do is try to draw that onto the styrofoam. Now, when we start, this one, this side here will be towards the door. So this one does not really matter where it ends up, but this one is going to be continued onto the other panels. So this side does make a difference how you start, where you start with this side. If you start really low, you're going to have a huge dip in between the two panels, which is not something that you want. So I would say you start probably about halfway. And because the panel is not all that high, it's not as high as it could have been if I had two of the same size. I cut this one in half. Um, so we're going to keep it as close to the top as we can, but this first mountain is quite a bit smaller than the second mountain, so we're going to keep it down farther, and then have the second mountain come to the top of the panel, all the way. Now that one still could be a little bit too high. Take your time, have a good look at it, determine whether that's exactly what you want, and if it isn't, do it again, because you're going to be painting over it anyways. You're not going to see some of the mistakes you're going to cut away, and some of the other drawing, the pencil drawings you're going to be painting over, so you won't see them. like to have a snow line on my mountain. Yes, I think that's quite nice. I do like that. The next step, which is a scary step, you need to carve that out. Just is a little bit scary because you've got your panel and you really don't want to mess it up. But take your courage into your hand and start. You really cannot make mistakes. I don't believe so. turning out the way I thought it would. Oh, I should have worn my mask. Well, it's done now. Hmm. 
time will tell whether this is what I want. This is artistic license, and it's very, very odd feeling that you can do whatever you want, and yet you're afraid to make mistakes. So now I have this all carved out, I'm going to actually sculpt it a little bit uh, to make it into a bas relief. And the tools that I'm going to be using is my sculpting tool from Hotwire Foam Factory, as well as my carving tool. Now the one that's in between, I don't have. I broke that, so I'm waiting for that one to be delivered. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to be using these two tools. What I have to do is I have to soften these edges and start carving all the marks in it and giving it the texture, the uh, mountainous texture and so on. So first I'm going to be using the carving tool, I mean the sculpting tool, and I'm going to be cleaning up these edges somewhat. I have actually, I don't know if you can see this, turned the wire into a scoop, a little bit easier to use. Take the sharp edges off. take the sharp edges off and carve it into a realistic looking mountain. bits at a time. Last year I did this with the box cutter. It was a little cruder, a little more different, difficult to control. Didn't have as much control over the marks that I made in the, in the mountain. I'm not doing anything in particular, just guiding it through. It makes its marks by itself. I like to keep my workplace clean, so I vacuum after every, every use of the box cutter or the carver. Once I have my carving and my cleaning up done, you take a wire brush and you brush it. And what, what this does is it, it not only loosens up all the loose pieces of styrofoam and gets them off the mountain, it also gives you more texture, a little more texture in the styrofoam.
another huge mess. <sighs> Be prepared for the mess. So that's basically how you carve the styrofoam. I'll show it to you up close. You can see there's lots of texture in it from the wire brush and there's some crevices and some markings for the for the edges of the mountains. That's pretty much the carving complete, the, the mountains completed, how I cover it with a spackling and how I paint them. Once that's done, then we have our mountain and we can put it up uh, behind the diorama. So stay tuned for the next video. Peace and blessings. Goodbye.